Maybe the latest Blender update just dropped and you are probably thinking, why not upgrade now and get all the new features? It is free, constantly evolving, and every new release brings something new to the table. But is upgrading immediately always the best move? Well, not necessarily. While new versions bring new features, they can also come with bugs, compatibility issues, and some workflow disruptions that aren't worth the headache, especially if you are in the middle of a project. Let's start with the obvious. Blender updates often introduce experimental features and other improvements, but they are not always as stable as you would hope. Because every new release has a potential to bring bugs, crashes, and unexpected glitches that can throw you off, especially if you are working on something. And if you've been working on a major project for days or weeks, you know how much a crash or a bug in your software can throw you off, and this can even occur on the stable version too, let alone the newest versions. And it is far more common than you would think, especially if you go with the update. As you know, Blender's development moves fast, but this also means not every issue gets caught before the new version is released. As one Blender artist said, I tend to stick to the LTS releases for production stuff unless there is a specific version that I want to try which seems like a better and a wiser choice. So if your current version works just fine, upgrading just to access new features might not be worth the risk, because crashes are not the only issues. Performance can also be unpredictable. Some updates introduce optimizations that can make certain aspects faster, while others can slow things down unexpectedly. For example, New rendering changes might affect how the materials and lighting behave, leading to unexpected results in finished projects. And sometimes, even small tweaks to the UI or how certain tools process data can lead to workflow slowdowns, especially for 3D artists who have optimized their setups according to the version they have and the one that they are currently using. Now, let's talk about add-ons. I'm pretty sure that if you have been using Blender for a while, chances are you have collected a very nice library of add-ons, whether it is for rigging, UV mapping, asset management, simulation, cloth, and so on. And I have to admit that lots of 3D artists cannot use Blender without its add-ons. But when Blender releases a major update, add-on developers need some time to adapt their add-ons to make them compatible with the new version. In the meantime, you are stuck without your essential tools. So imagine relying on an auto-rigging add-on to speed up your character creation and animation process, only to find it incompatible with the new update. Now you've got a workflow disaster. Either you're gonna try to find alternatives, which is really difficult and not exactly smooth, or you're gonna go back to your previous version. I mean before the update. As one Blender user noted, I have version 3.0 and 4.4 alpha installed for add-on testing, but I mainly stick with the latest for release for personal use. Point being, if you have a reason to use previous versions, then I don't see anything wrong with doing so. And it's the same if you don't have a reason to upgrade. Thankfully, as this guy noted, you can keep multiple Blender versions on your system if you download it directly from the website instead of using the Microsoft Store. That way, you can test the new features without losing access to your actual setup. Generally speaking, Blender add-ons are more than just a convenience for many users. They are actually an integral part in their workflow. So when an update breaks its compatibility with your tools, it feels less like an update and more like a setback. And as this Blender artist said, Unless you have old add-ons that are not being updated anymore or something, I would highly advise that you upgrade. It's actually a good point. If your tools are updated and unsupported, you might need to weigh your options before committing to the newest version. Now, let's be real. 
even if everything seems fine, after an update, there is a good chance that Blender's interface or how certain features work can change or has changed. Sometimes those changes are great and sometimes they can throw you off. Take the jump from 2.7 to 2.8 for example. The new interface and EV was nice, but if you were used to the old workflow, it felt like learning a brand new program. Buttons got removed, tools acted differently, and it was a lot to take in. And don't get me started on the modifier's menu changes. What was once a simple list now feels like a whole dynamic menu system. It definitely got more options, but man, it can be a little bit confusing at first. I used to have the subdivision surface and the bevel modifiers locked down, but now I'm out here searching for them like it is some sort of scavenger hunt. Also, some of the new features Blender throws in might not exactly make sense right away. You might find yourself spending hours and even days figuring out how they work. While that might be fun for the curious artist who loves exploring new features, for someone working on a project with a limited period of time, it can drain your productivity and efficiency. There is another thing to consider, ongoing projects and file compatibility. Let's say you are deep into an important project. Upgrading Blender halfway is not a great idea. The biggest issue is that files made or saved in a newer version might not work in the older versions. You could end up with missing textures, misplaced keyframes, or animations going all over the place. This gets even messier if you are working with a team. If one person updates to the latest version and someone else sticks with the older one, it's like trying to mix oil and water. Differences in versions can mess with the file compatibility, making collaboration nearly impossible. It is usually best to just stick with the version you started with, especially if you are in the middle of something big. That way, you can dodge the stress and avoid a whole bunch of compatibility headaches. On a side note, Blender has one of the most passionate and knowledgeable communities out there, which is awesome when you are stuck or learning something new. But when a major update drops, it can take a minute for the community to catch up. You might notice that tutorials, guides, and troubleshooting resources for the latest versions aren't immediately available. If you hit a bug or feature that you can't quite figure out, you might find yourself hunting through forums simply to find answers only to realize that no one's posted about that issue, at least not yet. Meanwhile, most tutorials and resources will still be focused on the older, more stable versions of Blender. So you could end up relying on updated info while the community scrambles to catch up. But now you might say, what is the best option if I want to use the latest stable update of Blender? Sticking with a stable or the LTS version of Blender is usually your best bet. LTS versions are designed to be the stable and as bug-free as possible. They have been tested by a ton of users over a longer period of time. So most of the bugs have been taken out and these versions are less likely to crash, have fewer bugs, and they are just generally speaking more reliable for high stake or serious work. Another big plus of using the LTS version is that you will have way more resources to work with. Lots of tutorials, guides, and troubleshooting tips which are geared towards using these versions. This is especially useful if you are using specific add-ons since they are more likely to be compatible with these older and more stable versions. Plus. You don't have to deal with unexpected changes in the interface or functionality which can throw you off. Now, don't get me wrong though, there are definitely times when upgrading to the latest version of Blender can be really worth it. For those of us who love testing new features, Blender updates are very exciting. Remember when EVNX dropped? 
the revamped engine was too good not to dive into it, and who could resist playing around with the ray tracing portal shader? So getting these features early is really exciting and gives you an edge, especially if you like experimenting and trying new stuff. In addition, finding and reporting bugs doesn't just feel productive. It's a way to give back to the community and help make Blender better for everyone. So if you are someone who's not afraid of taking risks and testing new versions, well, you can test even the new builds and see what you can find there when it comes to exciting Blender features. But generally speaking, if you want something safe, you better stick to the LTS versions. And there you have it, guys. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Also, you can check some of our previous videos. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.